Good. And um, I've actually remembered to record the class today. So hopefully this will be available online <clears throat> for those of you who want to do any or all the exercises again later. Especially, I mentioned this in my newsletter recently, but I just can't stop mentioning how important it is during difficult times to have a daily practice. And it doesn't even have to be a yoga practice, but it is nice when it's something that you can do that really feeds your soul. And even if it's just five minutes, um, it makes all the difference. I know my practices really helped me sail through this intense time. Okay, so today's class is for brain health. We'll be doing a lot of moving the spine to increase the flow of cerebral spinal fluid to the brain. Um, that's definitely an advantage of yoga and of course to keep us younger, right? Because the yogis say you're only as young as your spine. So for those of you newer to this style of yoga, we do the practice and the practice we deliberately challenge ourselves. Today's practice will be a little less challenging than usual for some of my regulars, but it, there will be some challenges. Um, and the reason is that we're trying to release the part of us we call the ego that wants everything to be safe, right? When we can challenge that, and the class is safe, but what I mean safe is uncomfortable. When we can challenge that and expand our boundaries, we get bigger um, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, energetically, all right? This is an energetic practice, not only in that we, we, move, uh, we move energy here. Because of that, in this tradition, we start our class with a chant. You don't have to chant, obviously you're home, you don't have to do anything, um, you don't want to, but that's why this, these words are here behind me, which hopefully you're reading um, right side to you. The chant is in Gurmukhi, which is an uh, ancient language from India, which expresses the whole purpose of Gurmukhi is to express our connection with the divine. And that's what this chant is for. The chant is Aung Namo Guru Dev Namo. We chant it loud and long for the glands in the brain. When you chant loud and long, especially that Aung um, really nasally, you're, you're buzzing pineal pituitary hypothalamus glands. So there's an endocrine system effect on that. And on namo, the namo was familiar to us, namaste, is a bowing. What are we bowing to? We're bowing to the infinite possibility for ourselves. That's the ang. The ang is infinite energy. Right? And even if you're like infinite energy, I don't know if I buy that. Let's just buy that there's probably more energy available to you than you realize. And the physical practices are meant to pull that in. So, Om Namo, I bow to the infinite energy. Guru Dev, it's caught in the glare there. Guru Dev is the divine, the Dev, teacher, Guru. All right, and the best part of that is that the divine teacher is here not here in my person, here in your own heart, all right? So everyone's divine teacher is within. And Namo, we bow to that. So when you chant, you're just basically saying, my higher self knows what's best for me. And my higher self is connecting to the infinite energy that supports us. Okay, a lot of talking for me. <laughs> Go ahead, please join me in rubbing the palms together. This is nice, just a nice way to wake up the brain because all this, the hands, the, the surface area of the hands have extra space in the motor cortex of the brain. So when you do this, you're not only waking up the frick through the friction of the skin, but you're waking up parts of the brain. Okay. Cool. Go ahead, press the hands together, lengthen the spine. Feel free to close the eyes to focus within. Take some deep breaths. And again, the chant is loud and long. We'll chant three times, taking a short breath in after that first namo. So it's ang namo breath, guru dev namo. 
three times. Here we go, deep breath in and out. Inhale to chant. Um. much air as you can. Inhale, inhale, hold the breath in. Bring your gaze up to the third eye point. Squeeze the root lock, pull the low belly in. Squeeze at the rectum, draw your sit bones together. Mula band, root lock, holds the energy inside. It can just feel like you're squeezing your tummy. Keep the breath in. Exhale. Now again, breathe in deep. This time we'll hold the breath out, breathe out. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Squeeze and hold the breath out. Bring the gaze up. We bring the gaze up because we want to lift our energy up. This is our wisdom center. So bring the energy up, up. Inhale and release. Flex the hands down. So um, we're going to be doing a fair amount of sitting. We'll take a standing break, don't worry. Um, and so for the sitting poses, a lot of them can be done in a chair. So if you like get tired of sitting on the floor, um, you can get a chair. You can also, you know, if you don't already have a cushion or a blanket under you, um, you can use that. I don't need one because I sit so much. Um, one other thing that um, we'll be doing a breath work series today. I have some tissues handy um, because good breath work helps clean out. So if you, it's useful to have tissues. All righty. So feel free to stretch the legs between seated poses. We're going to start our spinal warm ups today with, um, with what we call Sufi grind. So your butt is on the floor, and I like to start counterclockwise rotating the pelvis. Do you notice I'm not moving my neck yet? We'll do that later. Just rotate the pelvis counterclockwise. And again, this is one you could do in a chair. I'm going to share the screen to bring some music on. Keep going. my hair I'm not my skin I'm not my hair I'm not my skin I am the soul within I am the soul within I'm not my mind 
I'm not my body. I'm not my body. I'm not my mind. I am the soul within. I am the soul within. Now reverse direction. Clockwise, please. Center, give yourself a deep breath in, pull breath out. Close the eyes and check in to the spine, especially the low spine, right? We're starting low here in the hips. Coming into that yogic state of mind where you're simply observing the phenomena of the body, sensation in the body. Bringing the mind into the present moment, back to the present moment, back to the present moment. For our next exercise, you can do in this um, cross-legged-ish seat, or you can come on your knees, yogini's choice. <clears throat> if you're on your knees, your hands are on the shin, uh, sorry, thighs. Otherwise, your hands are on the shins. Try to zoom, getting the camera in the right spot. Okay. Either way, we're flexing the spine now. This is so good for cerebrospinal fluid, right? So every time you do this, you're getting younger and smarter. And you can do it in a chair. So holding on, inhale, heart forward, exhale back. My head's not, I mean, my head's moving. I'm not dropping and lifting my chin. <laughs> not talking either, unless I'm the teacher. Inhale, forward, exhale back. Keep going with that. And you can start slow and build up a little speed. Inhale, 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 hold the breath. 
Draw the low belly in and up. Squeeze at the rectum. Gaze up to the third eye. This work seals the energy of the practice, sends it up. Exhale now. Inhale again. Full exhale. Hold the exhale out, draw in and up. Inhale. Relax. Back into the body. If you need to stretch the legs by all means, stretch the legs. So what's happening off camera is that I'm using my phone to time the exercises because this is another way of releasing that ego. Ego says, oh, I'm bored, I'm done. Whereas if you do exercise with the timer, you do them till the end of the time. That's part of the way of strengthening your mental resolve. Uh, the next pose is nice and simple. You're inhaling the shoulders up, exhale, drop them down. Shoulder shrugs, inhale and exhale. Keep going, please. Inhale up, exhale down. Only the soul within. The soul within. The soul within. The soul. Inhale, squeeze up. Hold the breath and squeeze. Exhale, relax. Check in with those shoulders. So you might imagine doing this work helps clear energetically and also muscularly tension in this area. So then there's more availability for blood to flow to the brain. So there's a lot um, to be said for clear, keeping the energy between the heart and the head clear. We'll be doing more of that work with some nice, easy neck rolls. So again, if you need to stretch the legs, by all means, <clears throat> we'll be in our seated posture and take the head in one direction. I'll tell you when to switch nice and easy does it really make this a meditation where you're observing the motion in the neck what i am i am i am what i am i am i am what i am
reverse direction of your neck roll. And stretch out the legs. We will make our way up to standing. <clears throat> and still with the aim of moving the spine, moving the spine in three directions while standing. We'll start with twists. So come to a solid standing position, meaning your feet are comfortably apart. You can feel the ball and the heels of the feet on the floor. So stay solid in the feet here. Knees can bend to support you. Arms, stretch arms, make sure you're not gonna smack a wall or a pet or a person. And begin twisting side to side. The arms are weightless. Again, you can start slow and build up to a speedier experience. We'll get the music back. Center. Back to center. If you enjoy this one as I do, make a mental note that this is something you could do as part of a daily practice. Just standing around and twisting. 
moving the spine in the next direction laterally. Really important to keep the feet solid here. You can bring them a little closer together if it's okay for your balance. Um, because keeping the grounded through the waist allows resistance for the stretch. So inhale, I lean to the left. My feet stay on the floor. Exhale to the right. It's fine if you bend the knees here, if you need to bend one knee or the other, but keep the weight planted down so that again, you can um, get the resistance and really get that stretch in the side body. breath in and out. Okay. Third main direction of the spine is forward and back, flexion and extension. So bring the hands together. Once again, the feet are, feet can be um, hip width apart here, firm in the belly, squeeze in and up to support yourself. Inhale, reach up, if you're more flexible and want to lift the breastbone towards the ceiling and exhale, release down. Continue, please. Inhale, sweep up, pull the belly in to support the back. Exhale, release down. Soften the face. A couple of grounding breaths here in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay. Come 
down to sit on the mat with the legs out straight in front of you. Okay. Legs straight out in front, feet are flexed. <clears throat> Keep the spine long here. If you need a cushion under you, that works. This is to warm up the backs of the legs. It's also a nice way to keep the lungs, the muscles of the lung, um, supporting the lungs working. Arms are in front. Inhale, lean back a little. Exhale, lean forward. Keep going with that inhale and exhale. You're not trying to touch your toes. You'll go as far and you start to feel that pull in the backs of the legs and then let it go. So gently warming up the hamstrings, getting some toning action in the core, keeping the shoulder blades plugged back. Inhale back, exhale forward, keep going. Here. You can turn sideways on your mat and take your legs into a V, V, toes facing the ceiling. And if you feel yourself naturally slumping here, give yourself a cushion. Ooh. All right. Stretching these inner um, thigh muscles, the adductors, helps it, um, helps one sit. And that's always useful for us yogi. So hands stay in place, just so, so wherever they rest on the leg. Inhale to center, exhale, turn and lean forward. Keep the spine long. Don't worry about how far down you go. Inhale, back up. Exhale, turn and come down. So inhaling up, exhale, turn and come down gently. Your legs don't have to be as wide as mine. In fact, mine don't have to be as wide as mine. Focus with the third eye. Squeeze the low belly in. Exhale. 
And gently draw the legs in and come back to a cross-legged seat. And um, bring the thumb and the little finger together. The three middle fingers are straight. We'll be crossing the arms here to stretch and strengthen the shoulder, the intrascapular area. Before you do, release the arms down. Um, for this exercise, we'll be doing one of my favorite breaths, breath of fire. Breath of fire um, delivers more oxygen to the brain. So of course I have to include it in a class on brain health. We'll be doing it in another pose in a few minutes, but let's practice that. Breath of fire is um, a very thorough, forceful exhale out the nose, hence the Kleenex. Pull the low belly in, all right? Air comes out maybe other stuff, whatever. And then that creates a vacuum, your inhale just happens. So it looks like this. As you get more adept, you can go faster. But the focus is powerful exhale out the nose. So back to the hand thing, bring the thumb and middle last finger together. Arms are gonna be straight. We're gonna crisscross with breath of fire. So do that breath pattern while crossing the arms. And you can go again at the speed you need to. If you get dizzy doing breath of fire, please um, don't do that. If you think you might be pregnant, no breath of fire. If you have a hiatal hernia, no breath of fire. This is an energizing breath. While you do this, keep the arms straight. Send the energy up, seal it. Exhale, hands down, relax. Notice if you feel a little more alert or energized. If not, don't worry, you will. We'll be doing more of that. But first, um, you know, one classic uh, yoga technique for bringing energy and blood and oxygen to the brain is going upside down. Um, fear not, we're not gonna do a headstand today. You can do that on your own time. I will have you come down onto your mat and prepare for downward facing dog, which means my hands are and shoulder width apart, spreading the fingers. Tuck the toes, I'm gonna to lift my bottom up. If that's too much for you, you can get a similar effect by having your hands on a chair or this handy stool and doing this way. But you see my head is dropping down below my hips and my heart. So that is an alternate. Otherwise, hands on the floor, tuck the toes. Press in the hands and feet, lift the hips up. Lift the hips up, you're in the pose. And come into long deep breaths here. We're gonna stay here for a little while. Not the rest of class, I promise. 
your legs are tight and you want to bend one knee and then the other knee, you can do that. Staying strong here, keep lengthening the spine up. Allow the head to relax. Deep breaths. In Kundalini Yoga, we can use a mantra uh, called Sat Nam. Sat Nam. And you say it to yourself, especially if you're feeling challenged. When you inhale, you think Sat. When you exhale, you think Nam. And the mantra means I connect with my true essence, right? Which is shorthand for saying that we're generally speaking stronger and braver than we think. If you need to rest and come on your knees, that's fine. And then come back into the pose. We're not here so much more. Sat as you inhale, nam as you exhale. The last few seconds of the pose, see if you can relax a little bit more. Good. And exhale, bring the knees down to the floor, release back. You can relax the arms behind you, set your head down. Come into child's pose, take some deep breaths. Good. As you're ready, gently rise back up. Come into a seated position. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to use a chair. Today's set is a pranayama set, which means moving energy. Prana is our energy. Pranayama is the, is the um, art of moving energy through, mainly through the breath. Um, so again, if you wanna sit in a chair for this, that's fine. And the set is meant to balance the upward and the downward flowing energy. I do like it for the brain set because of the oxygenating nature of the breath work. The first pose to be sitting with your arms straight out to the side, palms are up. So let those shoulder blades Roll them back and down, stretch through the fingers. And in this shape, we will come into breath of fire. So that forceful exhale followed by that passive inhale. Really important, you're not using your mouth for this one. We'll do some mouth breathing later. And you want to find a pace with this breath that your mind can remain calm. So if you're feeling, you want to invigorate the body that the mind stays calm. That might mean slowing it down. So notice if there's a part of you that wants to bring the arms down, right? There's a part of me that does too. We tend to identify that, right, as the part that wants to be comfortable. Keep the arms extended. This is also feeding the heart energy of the heart. Keep the arms extended. Obviously, if you're dealing with an injury, you could, you know, if your shoulders, you know, 
hurt, you can bring it down. But if it's just sort of this mild discomfort, because this is not something you usually do, stay with it, right? Less than 30 seconds to go. Get ready, keep the arms up, inhale deep. Hold the breath, flip the palms away from you. Press the palms away, hold the breath and press, hold and press. Lifting that lock. Exhale, relax the arms down. Feeling new sensations in the arms and shoulders. Coming into another invigorating breath. It is a four part inhale, four part exhale, all through the nose. So we'll be sniffing in the breath in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. It looks like this. To do that, you'll have the arms up again. And this time you'll touch your ring finger. In yoga cosmology, this is your sun finger, the ring finger. And this is a sun breath, meaning it invigorates you. So don't, don't do this one before bed. All right, elbows are up goalpost style. You can see my fingers. I'm touching there. And I will count us through this. So begin, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Keep going, your navel is pumping in as you breathe in and as you breathe out. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. 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 In, two, three, four. 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 Out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, 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 out, two, three, four. Inhale, bring the palms together, hold the breath, inhale. Stretch the arms up. Squeeze the root, so pull in and up with the belly. Exhale, keep the arms up. Inhale again. Exhale it all out. Pull up, pull the breath out. Inhale, relax the arms down. Check in and see how you feel. Notice if your brain is a little more alive. I 
in if you need to stretch the legs between these poses, especially if you're sitting on the floor, by all means do that. So next we will interlace the fingers and press them away from you. Okay. Working it out with your rings, etc. And very simple, inhale, stretch the arms straight up overhead, exhale, bring them straight down in front. Not all the way to the floor, just up and down like so. Keep going with that. Bring the music back. Notice all the new sensations in the shoulders, the neck, the arms. And again, when you go past your perceived limit, you're opening yourself to new possibilities. You know, on the one hand, and on the other hand, again, if you have shoulder injuries and you're feeling real pain as you're moving, it's up to you, right? The Guru Dev inside to know when to back off. For our next exercise, we're going to stretch out the hands, palms away. Stop in the name of love mudra, right? And inhale, the arms up again. The backs of the hands can touch. Exhale, bring them back to horizontal. Keep going with that. Inhale and exhale.
Hold the breath in. Feel that space in the body. Again, send the gaze up. Keep the arms up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, hold the breath up. Connect. Inhale, release the arms back down. Centering breath in, centering breath out. Stretching the legs as you need to. my regular students know there's always some part we tend to work a lot and today it's obviously the arms um, only a couple more arm things right and again um just like bringing your gaze up bringing by bringing the arms up you're lifting your body's energy up right you never see depressed people standing around with their arms in the air right this is always a happy position um so we're gonna get even more happy with the arms back up when you bring the arms up this time, this time we're touching first and making the okay sign. Okay sign with uh, first finger and thumb. Have the elbows at shoulder height. Notice if your shoulders wanna crunch up, drop the shoulders, root them down the back. Root the, your seat by pulling in the belly. Inhale, turn to the left. Exhale, turn to the right. Again, keeping those arms shoulder level. Shoulder level arms, inhale left, exhale right. If you're getting frustrated again, you can think sucked nam, right? Using this time to connect with the essence. Because when the body gets uncomfortable, the mind likes to complain, at least mine does, right? And so using the mantra, take some of the complaining, because the compl mental complaining makes the work harder. Right? Sucked nam. Keep the arms up, inhale deep, 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 hold the breath, send the energy up to the third eye. Keep the arms up, exhale, inhale, exhale. Hold the breath out, pull the belly in, squeeze the sitting bones in. Inhale, bring the arms down. Okay. Quietly observe. Notice if your arms have fallen off. If they have, just put them back on. <clears throat> Feel free to stretch the legs. We'll do one more round of side to side. This is seated. 
Fingers in front, thumbs in back. Right, so the hands can rest this time on the shoulders. But again, keep the elbows up, lifting, lifting, lifting the energy up. You can let your energy drop later on your own time. But now we're keeping it lifted. Inhale, lean to the left. Exhale, lean to the right. And try to keep your butt on the floor. Right, so really getting that stretch. Um, this is great for the lateral muscles in the back, particularly the quadratus lumborum, which can cause a lot of um, pain across the body. So doing this work is really a great preventative and very balancing. Almost done. Inhale. Exhale it all out. Hold the breath out. Elbows stay up. Send the energy up. You're doing awesome. Inhale. Release down. Send your deep, soothing breath into the shoulders and the arms. Are you practicing that magic of being able to soothe yourself? Your deep breaths and loving intentions. <clears throat> Coming into um, some more breath work and you can stretch the legs if you like. Alternate nostril breathing, which is um, a classic to balance the two hemispheres of the brain. And people often do this um, slowly to kind of deregulate themselves and calm down. This set has us doing it more quickly, which is kind of a fun way to do this breath. And since it's morning, why not? So you'll use your right hand. If you wanna support your elbow with the other hand, that's fine. You're gonna block the right nostril with your right thumb and inhale through the left. Then you block the left nostril with the uh, and ring finger and breathe out the right. And that's all it is, in left, out right. So. You're not turning your head, I'm just doing that for the demo. Go as quickly as feels comfortable to you.
Hold the breath. Release and exhale. A couple deep breaths to clear. Stretch your legs as you need. Coming into more cooling, soothing breath. For this one, have your chin tucking in, all right? This is chinla, jalandhar band, um, which is basically the Sanskrit way of saying, try to see if you have a double chin, right? That's what this is. This blocks energy too, or it contains energy, I should say. And stick the tongue out. We'll be breathing in through the mouth, over the tongue. If you're one of those people who can roll your tongue into a straw shape, I'm not, <laughs> pretend I am. Um, you're gonna breathe, curl the tongue, breathe in. This is shitali pranayam. Breathe in over the tongue. The saliva cools the breath as it comes in and then breathe out the nose. Nice and slow, long deep breaths in. Out the nose. The tongue can stay out. Keep that chin down. Nice and long breaths here. Exhale out the nose, inhale the nose, exhale out the nose, pull the breath out, pull the low belly in. And inhale. 
one last breath exercise. And this involves a mudra or hand position. If you need to stretch your legs like I do, um, you can do that. The hand position is touching all the fingertips. All fingertips touch, pinkies, ring, middle, first. And then the three middle fingers all touch each other. Right, these guys are the little gang here in the middle. And there's space, the pinkies stretch away and the thumbs stretch away. So you bring this position in front of you, and if you do it right, you can look through the hand to see your pinkies. You're gonna keep your gaze there at the pinky fingers. So again, the middle three fingers are touching each other. All the fingertips are touching. Pinky stretch away, thumb stretch in towards you. Now hold the shape, keep your gaze there. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the mouth, exhale nose. Inhale nose, exhale mouth. Inhale mouth, exhale nose. Inhale nose, exhale mouth. Inhale, mouth. Exhale, nose. Inhale, nose. Exhale, 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 mouth. Inhale, mouth. Exhale, nose. Last round, inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. Inhale, mouth. Exhale, nose. Release the hands, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath, lift the lock, lift the gaze up. Exhale, release. We'll take a few minutes to relax on the back. Coming into Shavasana, corpse pose, stretch the legs out. Relax the head on the floor. Be here for a few minutes. And then coming into meditation. So just soften and release. Soften and release.
deep breath in and let it out with a sigh. Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Move the hands and the feet. Stretch the arms overhead. Stretch out as long as you can. Take a deep breath in, full breath out with a sigh. Ah. Draw the knees into the chest, gently rock from side to side. Rock from front to back, really squeezing the core and either rock or press up to a seated position. As promised, we are going to end with a really effective meditation called Kirtan Kriya. And it's effective because there's a lot going on with it. There's a lot going on with it. Kirtan Kriya um, uses um, the mudra, finger motions, and again, this is stimulating different parts of the brain when you're touching your fingers to, um, to the thumb. And there's a mantra, which we'll be saying out loud, we're kind of singing, then we'll be whispering it, then we'll be saying it silently to ourselves, then whispering again, and saying out loud. And the mantra is here, sa, ta, Glare. Na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. To get my handy stool. Um, which is, yeah, a remarkably similar to satnam. Has the same meaning, it's just in a different form. Connecting with your true essence. Um, one last aspect of this, and this is really found to help. Um, with brain health. And I had sent a link to an article and if you don't have it, I'm happy to send it to you. When you chant sa, your both fingers are touching. And ta, middle, na, ma. You keep that going, even when the mantra is silent. 
Every time we do the mantra, sa, ta, na, ma, every syllable, you imagine energy coming in the crown of the head and making an uh, L shape and going out the forehead. Sa, ta, na, ma. So you're, it's just imagining, but it really has this cool effect. Imagining energy coming out this way um, and that L shape. And um, this meditation is a spiritual cleanser, helps dealing with loss. It replenishes brain chemicals and lowers cortisol, which is a stress hormone. It improves cerebral blood flow and flow to the posterior cingulate gyrus, which is better thinking and memory retrieval and increases activity in the frontal lobe, which sharpens attention, concentration, and focus. Activates occipital lobe, which improves clarity of purpose. Who doesn't want all that? Only 11 minutes. So um, class is gonna go over a couple minutes today. I apologize. There were just so many fun things to share. So please join me. Be seated, stretch the legs out, if you haven't already. And, <clears throat> We'll begin as a group. Sa, ta, na, ma. Every time that activation. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa ta na 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 ma. Sa ta. Na ma sa ta 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 na Ma, now whisper. Sa, ta, na, na. Sa, ta, na, ma. 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 Sa, ta, na, ma.
Now silently, keep the tongue moving, keep the fingers moving, keep the L shape in the head. Now back to whispers. Sa, ta, na, na, 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 sa, ta. 
Now aloud, sa, ta, na, ma, 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 last round, sa, ta, na, ma, release the hands, take a deep breath in, lift and hold, exhale, relax, that all those changes in the brain don't happen with one time. It happens with repeated practice. So um, I have on my YouTube channel, uh, I believe I have um, a version of this. So if you want to keep practicing it, um, that's a place you can look. You can also just Google Kirtan, K-I-R-T-A-N, Kriya, bazillions of it online. So once you get the rhythm of it, um, you can practice it. Practice it. Once you get through the moment, you'll keep practicing it. So in this tradition, we end with a song. Today, since we're already over time, I'm just going to read the lyrics to you. So please bring the hands together at the heart and um, receive these words at your heart. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. Okay. You'll join me, we'll do one long sat and a short nam together. So deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. Sa. Blessings of this practice fill your heart. May your brain be clear. May your mind be kind. May all of us learn to live together in peace. Satnam, thank you for practicing and resting.